Our next guest is uh, Segun Adebayo. He is uh, the creator of the award-winning component library, Chakra UI. He is a UI engineer that's passionate about design systems, accessibility, and bridging the gap between design and code. He's also a diehard Naruto fan. Um, I haven't heard of anime, so I can't wait to hear about that. So yeah, I'll go ahead and bring Sagun Adebayo on the stage. Hey, Sagun. Hey, Alex. How are you doing? I am doing well. Um, so everyone, to everyone, this session will be more of a Q&A session, um, talking about design systems, um, not specific to React, hopefully not specific to React. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So yeah, so my awesome. first question yeah. is, uh, what is Chakra UI? Yeah, good question. Um, Chakra UI is, a, uh, right now I'd say it's a React component library that gives you all the building blocks that you need to create a website or a web app with speed. Uh, so basically, um, all, the, all the decisions you have to make when you're trying to build it, like an app, you need some buttons, you need some menu, you need a dialogue. Um, all of these different building blocks tend to take a lot of time when you're building some sort of product. And in this day and age, when people want to launch products fast, you want to quickly reach product market fit. Um, so Chakra UI just helps you, give you that speed and boost that you need to actually get your product out there in the hands of your customers. Oh, awesome. And what was the motivation behind building Chakra UI? Yeah, it's... It's actually out of like personal struggle, <laughs> and uh, it's very interesting because like um, I probably say somewhere between like five years ago to six years ago, I, I I used to like do lots of like heavy UI work. I wasn't a developer, um, so I spent a lot of my time um, designing mockups, specking out the mockups for developers, and just like I mean annotating interactions so developers actually get it right and then it's like what i mean by from what i what i mean when i said it came from personal struggle is more like after doing all of this crazy detailed work you, you just send it over to the developer and it's like the next week when you see it you, it, it looks like this is not what i designed right this is definitely not it <laughs> yeah and there's always this like constant mismatch between like, between what you design and what the final code output looks like, right? So that that happened like a lot of times on different projects. And I was really curious to see like what 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 could be the problem here? Because as as designers, I guess maybe we are just too spoiled because we have a lot of amazing tools out there. Uh, we have Figma, we have Sketch, we have Adobe XD. You can pretty much design anything on the fly these days once you have the idea. But the speed of design is, I mean, you can very much agree with me that it's not equal to the speed of code or the speed of like translating that to code. It's maybe 10 times more than the speed of design. So, and that's because developers have to wrestle with like libraries, different ideas, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, uh, before getting to the final solution. So that basically uh, influenced my, my motive to just like, let me try to build some, let me see if this makes sense. I'm just a designer. I mean, at that point in time, I'm like, I'm just a designer, but maybe I can learn these the things that my friends know, and maybe they can teach me to be able to build something that works for them. Oh, awesome. You know, there's also the other aspect where as a developer, you see a really good design and you, you like it, of course, but then yeah. again, you're thinking about the pain of how, of how much <laughs> it will take you to build the component or that specific yeah. bit of the UI. And sometimes it's it's painful. So I definitely understand um, how a component library helps out, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's, it's a two-way thing at the end of the day. I mean, I feel like um, if you ask me this day and age, should the designer learn to code? I'll say if you if you can and you feel like you have, if you feel interested, I'll say you should um, because it really helps. Uh, basically, if you go outside the realm of um, like web or just go to another industry, for example, engineering, um, mechanical engineering. If you are doing mechanical design, uh, you definitely need to have good knowledge about like. Um, the actual device you're building for. I mean, if you're a mm -hmm. civil engineer, you want to design uh, the plan of a building, you need to know a lot about concrete and different like options of concrete. You cannot just say like, uh, I just know how to design and that's all. I mean, it, that's why I, mean, I would say like, 
having good knowledge of the medium you're designing for helps you become a better designer, um, essentially. So that is, um, that's really what influenced my decision to just like switch fields and see if I could really learn uh, this medium. And hopefully I might get back to design full time. I'm not sure right now, it doesn't look like, but let's see. Okay, okay, awesome. And also in this day and age as developers, we've been spoiled by, we've also been spoiled by the numerous component libraries. We have Ant, we have Chakra, we have Spectrum, the list is endless. And sometimes we get out of touch with building a, a component somehow, one that is reusable. So the question is, what are the aspects that I should consider as a developer when I want to build a component library? Uh, for example, the state, accessibility, styling, layouts, like to know. Yeah, it's um, that's that's a good question. I'd say like it depends. There there are two different um, there are two different ways you, you can look at this. One would be like I have a product. I just want to build a couple of components to I mean to sort of build out the uh, build out or scaffold this product pretty fast. And this or the other thought is. I just want to build a set of components for maybe for NPM so other people could install and use for their projects. That those two different, I mean, those are two different worlds, and it's more like you want to choose your battle very carefully uh, because, like, um, it's it's a switch between intermediate and advanced and very advanced, especially for the NPM world where you want to like distribute distribute that to everyone there in the open source world uh, because. There are tons of use cases you might not be able to design for um, if it was open source uh, that you probably feel very discouraged when you see the number of issues that come at you when you release it. But if it's just for your product, just you alone, you want to build a set of components to build your products, that's way easier. And I always recommend starting there uh, before get building any, uh, so building an open source component library. All right, so let's just take the simple scenario of I have a web product I want to launch and I want to build a set of components uh, for them. All right, so the, the different components you have in mind, one would be like the, uh, basically the components you want to build and the pattern around that component, right? So if you're building a menu component, there's, there's, there's a spec for a menu component, right? So basically, I'm not sure if most people are aware, but there's usually like a web standard or a web, a web practice, or it's called authoring practices for all of these different components, right? So if you wanted to build a menu, I usually advise you just go take a moment to read through the authoring practice for a menu component, right? So uh, the, I mean, the, the body that sort of sets up these standard practices is called like Y area. So it's sort of like the um, W3C consortium for like all of these different components. So you just go there, read the spec of how the standard looks like. And it, it gives you, it walks you through the HTML semantic structure. It walks you through the CSS. It even walks you through a bit of the JavaScript knowledge you need to have. Or if you are a Stack Overflow copy paste type of human being, it also gives you the code that you need to actually get it working. Uh, maybe if you if you can port that code over to your React or Vue or any framework, uh, you probably just get that pattern working uh, working for you. So that is like the easiest, like low low friction way to actually start um, building out your component. And then for sure, you might run into things like state management. How do you break up state? Um, how do you want to be the component? Do you want to be the components in a way that is super flexible? Or do you just want to be like, if you want the model, this is a model. There's nothing you can do. Uh, it's just once you drop it in, it works. And I think that's always a good place to start. And over time, you can build in flexibility um, into your components. Interesting. And on mentioning the why are your standards, is this something that also designers should keep in mind when designing um, a layout or a UI, for example? Yeah, well, it, it depends. Uh, I, I, I want, I, if you ask me in an ideal world, in my Sage world, I really would want like every, every designer to have knowledge, um, have some sort of knowledge around the standard practices. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I, I know that most designers are very familiar with the material design guideline. Most people are also familiar with the human interface guideline by Apple. So it's like, uh, in addition to these different guidelines you use or you try to learn when designing, it would be good to also like learn for the medium. 
right? Because material design and like human interface guideline is basically, they are all principles. They are not like platform specific um, guides. They're just like general principles in building up or designing applications. But for the web in, in, in particular, I'd love if designers could also like learn some sort of this um, area of practices and authoring standards for the web as well. Okay, okay, awesome. So, and when I'm building a component, let's just start with a button, which is the hello world for design systems. How do you usually decouple state? Because I was also going through um, React Spectrum, which is also decoupled into three other libraries, I think. Um, one for managing behavior, another one for interaction. How did you go about it or how would you go about it when building a code or decoupling states? Yeah, it's, it's it's one of those things where I usually start with like, try to avoid like over overthinking or over engineering most of the things. So uh, if it's as uh -huh. simple as just creating a button element and just writing a bunch of CSS, that actually works for most of the scenarios, right? So it's, you, you probably, maybe maybe your button design might have a couple of like left icon, right icons, like um, over active states, even though these are like states um, that you can, mm -hmm. You, you might want, you're tempted to write some JavaScript code for, uh, I'll, I'll definitely recommend starting from like, just use the CSS pseudo those states first, like just use the colon over, colon active, get most of the things done and ship your product. Really, if, if, you're, if you're building some, if you're in the business of UI engineering, I can go in depth to tell you like, there are some quirks, browser quirks, quirks around, active and over and when these different events fire. But if you're in the business of shipping a product, I definitely recommend like uh, start with the simple things first um, and then improve complexity depending on like the stage you are in your business. Um, I, I always like to like uh, correlate the effort and the result. If the result mm -hmm. is um, shipping a product to your customers, then maybe you can start simple. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, um, so something that I came to learn of as well um, through React Spectrum is React Area, which is Adobe's sort of um, library that you can build a component that is unstyled and is completely accessible. Is this um, is this something? Is is there a library you use to handle accessibility, and or how do you go about accessibility when building? Yeah, besides just shipping a product, I, I yes, I do believe in shipping. However, you still have to comply with the Y area standards. How do you go about it? Yeah, yeah for sure. And and that, that's like one of the things I mentioned like early on, which is basically reading through the Y area guide or specifications because everyone tends to build based on the same standard. So it's like, there's a single standard, but there are multiple implementations of that standard. Um, I always recommend you attempt to build your own implementation of that standard, just to learn just to learn what it feels like, to learn all the different like edge cases and scenarios you need to handle. Uh, while there are other libraries that can help you, like Chakra UI and React Area, I mean, those are awesome libraries that, that take away all the burdens from you. Um, but if you if you want to be a UI engineer or you want to actually build design system or component libraries, um, then you probably want to try to take the, read the spec and try to translate it into like how you best understand it. Because uh, there's a high chance that there might be your own unique perspective the sort of, there might be your own perspective, the way you see that spec and the way you translate or interpret that spec into code might be very different. Um, it might be unique, it might be different from Jack UI. it can also be different from React Area. Um, at the end of the day, it's like uh, multiple solutions to the same spec. Okay, okay. And um, are there any workflows or tools that you use to test components against, let's say, a device, platforms, and browsers. And I'm not going to throw shit, but thank God that IE was sort of brought to its end of life and yeah, it was sure. a bit of a pain. <laughs> so are there any tools or workflows that you use to um, test and make sure that everything renders as it's, everything behaves as it's supposed to be? Yeah, sure. Um, so there, there are different levels to test, um, especially when it comes to building a component library. Um, there's mm -hmm. the, uh, I, I tend to call it some sort of like unit test for components, which is like you, if you wanted to build a, a menu or a drop down component, I mean, a unit test would be like, or an interaction test would be like, I click on the menu button and the menu option shows up. 
and I can click a menu option. So that is some sort of like unit test. Um, that that only tests that this this functionality works the, the way the user would expect it to work essentially. So for those kind of tests, I grab in like React testing library. There's also another library called Ax, um, just Ax, uh, which mm -hmm. is just like pulling to actually test the DOM structure of your component. It renders your component and tests the DOM structure of that component. And Re React testing library also has a couple of utilities to test interactions, to fire different events and run assertions based on the event you fire. Um, and that also at least helps you get like the meat of your component uh, working correctly. Um, and then, uh, that, and that's like in some sort of like Node.js, I mean, environment, you're just testing interactions, renderings in the DOM and asserting that different interactions work correctly. Then when you want to go into the browser specific like environment, you could, uh, you could do, you could set up like Cy Cypress to also like, I mean, boot up the components uh, to actually in different browser contexts and actually like run the different interactions as well. Um, and there's also a Cypress testing library that I'm, I'm, I'm recently learning to use as well. So that's very useful. Um, I use browser stack as well so, I mean, from mm -hmm. time to time to test out, just load, boot up the component and test it in different browsers and uh, different environments, Firefox, Safari, um, uh, mobile Safari, iOS, iPhone, basically just make sure that it works correctly across all these different devices. And that's what makes the component development process really tedious because you get to find, you find many quirks, I mean, in different browsers and you have to just have some extra if else, if it's Apple, if it's Safari, it's like fix this. And uh, I mean, it's just like uh, getting into those details is what really makes up a UI engineer and like making building component libraries um, easy for most people. Okay, thank you. That was very detailed. And uh, for the last question, in case the chat you have any question, feel free to ask. And yes, uh, Laza and uh, engineering is a thing, and it's okay. So the last question is: Do I need a custom select? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you don't. At least to start. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and and the reason why and the reason why I say so, even though that's just a fun question, I feel like. Uh, being like a, a very good accessible select component is, is, is something. Um, I, I know of a team, uh, I think there's, there's the team at Radix UI tried to build a select component, uh, I think close to like between like three to five months. I'm not sure how long it took specifically, but I know they worked on it for years to actually get like lots like the perfect select component, like custom select. Um, even if you check out the work that's been done by the team at React Select, if you just take a look at React Select on its own, you see that it's a whole lot of use cases and lots of edge cases they try to handle in a single component. And that is quite a, a, lot, a number of things you need to take care of to make sure you build a select correctly. That's not to say you can't build a select component. You can if you have the audacity and the courage to do that. Please try. Uh, it will just take a while. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I am out of questions. Um, thank you for your time, and I will see you on oh, online or later, yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me today, Alex. Anytime. Okay. Bye. Bye.